Normally, if you want to move your hands, for example, you want to draw a picture, you need a couple of things to help you do that. First, you need your central nervous system, which is your brain and spinal cord, and they're made out of different neurons. And they would look like this under the microscope. And you need your hand muscles to contract. For doing so, you start thinking about moving your hands. This creates an electric signal in the upper neural cells in the brain, which creates in the cell bodies of neurons and they transmit it to their axons. These kind of electric signals are sent to the spinal cord in which our lower motor neuron exists. This section is called the anterior horn of the spinal cord. If you look at it under the microscope, it would be like this. This area is filled with the cell bodies of our lower motor neurons, which catch the signals coming from the brain and send it through their axons to the neuromuscular junctions. This is where these signals make your muscle contract. For any reason, if your muscle don't receive any contraction signals, just imagine that you just don't want to send any signals to them, then your muscles start getting weak because you don't use them. We call this medical condition muscular atrophy and this can be dangerous and horrifying because without voluntary muscles you can breathe or eat. There are a lot of examples of diseases which cause this condition, but series of conditions that affects your motor neurons and consequently cause your muscle to waste this motor neuron disease. All right. You probably remember the ice bucket challenge before it helps raising funds for the treatment of a motor neuron disease called ALS. Now if your lower motor neurons die or don't develop properly because of a genetic condition, it's called a spinal muscular atrophy or SMA. Spinal muscular atrophy, SMA. Spinal muscular atrophy. The spinal muscular atrophy or SMA is a rare degenerative muscle disease. Patients are missing the nerve cells in the spine that tells their muscles to move. Until 2016, there were no treatment for this disease. And now, if you look at the list of the most expensive drugs in the world, you probably see the name of Zolgensma on the top, which is a 2.5. $1 million gene therapy developed by the Vixis company. Five-month-old boy from London has become one of the first children to be treated with a groundbreaking new gene therapy drug after it was made available on the National Health Service in England. At a cost of $2.5 million per patient, uh, Solgensma is the world's most expensive drug and can increase the life expectancy by several years. To understand how exactly the SMA happens, first you should understand that nearly every function in our body is carried out by proteins, so our cells constantly manufacturing them. To make them, first our cells make a single strand copy of DNA called pre-messenger RNA or pre-mRNA. This process is called transcription. Pre-mRNA holds the instruction for making functional proteins in the cells. You can see two different kinds of regions in the pre-mRNA, which are exons and introns. The exons are the coding regions and translate to the functional proteins, but before that, the introns should be removed from the mRNA. This duty is done by a very smart and complex machine called a spliceosome. This is a complete procedure of the spliceosome. It's a very intricate process, but what is important is that a spliceosome is a ribonucleoprotein, aka RMP, which means it composed of proteins and special types of RNA called a small nuclear RNA or snRNA. This machine cuts the introns and connects the exons at their sites, and then the final mRNA can be translated to the functional proteins. One of the proteins involved in making the SNRMP in the cells is called the survival of motor neuron proteins, or SMN. Without them, the spliceosome doesn't work properly, and obviously, splicing and making functional proteins can't happen properly in the cells. Without proteins, our cells can develop and function in our body, and gradually, the cells, especially motor neuron cells, die in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. The SMN protein itself is a product of the transcription, splicing, and translation of the SMN genes. A gene is a sequence of pieces of DNA which holds the information for making functional proteins. The codes in the DNA are like the binary digits in computer codes, but instead of 0 and 1, it uses four different types of nucleotides. A nucleotide is a simple unit of DNA molecule which is composed of a sugar, a phosphate, and a type of nitrogen containing base. In DNA, we can see four different types of nitrogenous bases, which it can be shown with four English letters standing for adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine. DNA is so long that it can fit in the nucleus of a cell without modification, so different proteins condense the DNA molecules and make chromosomes. We have 23 pairs of them, which one set comes from our mother and the other comes from our father. 
22 pairs are identical in both male and female and we call them autosome. And every arm divided into region bands using a staining technique so we can use a system to name different regions. If you look at the chromosome of a healthy person, the SMN genes are on chromosome 5 at the location of Q13.2. Two nearly identical genes are responsible for making the SMN proteins, the SMN1 and the SMN2 genes. The SMA patients don't have the SMN1 gene in both chromosome 5, and the reason is that both parents have at least one chromosome 5 that doesn't have the SMN1 gene. So in every childbirth, we have four different possibilities. It has a 25% chance that the child is normal, 50% chance that the child is a carrier, and a 25% chance that the child doesn't have any SMN1 genes. There are several ways that the disease can be passed down through families, but this specific type is called autosomal recessive. The other gene that's responsible for making the SMN protein is the SMN2 gene, but it can make enough SMN protein. To understand why, first we should take a closer look at the SMN pre-mRNA structure. Both SMN1 and 2 pre-mRNA are nearly identical and contain 10 exons, but there's a little difference in the 6th position of exon 7 on the SMN2 gene that triggers the skipping of exon 7 from the final mRNA. This new mRNA translated to SMN delta 7 protein, which is unstable and degrades so fast in the cells. So SMN2 gene sometimes, about 80 to 90% of the times, encode the SMN delta 7, and sometimes, about 10 to 20%, makes a full-length SMN protein. As we said before, the SMA patients don't have the SMN1 gene, and there are two different strategies to treat this disease. One of them is to force the SMN2 gene to make more full-length SMN proteins, and the other one is to add a brand new SMN1 gene. Let's start with the first one. How can we force a gene to make more of a certain product? To understand how, first you should understand that every gene can make more than just one protein with a different combination of exons. The spliceosome cut the exon at specific sites, which we call them the splice sites. If the spliceosome chooses a different splice site every time, it can make different proteins with one single pre-mRNA. This process is called alternate splicing, and the codes in the pre-mRNA regulate this with the help of the interaction between different proteins and pre-mRNA. There are four different types of regions in the pre-mRNA that can regulate alternate splicing. They can be on exons or introns, and they can enhance or silence the interaction between the spliceosome and the splice sites. In our case, if you look closely around the exon 7, you probably find 10 different splicing regulatory elements. These regulatory elements are similar in SMN1 and SMN2 genes, but there is a difference in the sixth position in the SMN2 gene. The C nucleotide changed with the U nucleotide. This difference creates a silencer size on exon 7. HNRMP protein connect to this site and prevent the interaction between a spliceosome and the 3' splice site. Therefore, exon 7 remains attached to the introns and removed from the final mRNA. So if we can somehow change the regulatory elements behavior around the exon 7, we can correct the splicing of the SMN2 gene. For example, if we make a single strand sequence of nucleotides which is complementary to a silencer element on the SMN2 gene like the ISSN1, it can prevent the interaction between HNRMP protein and ISSN1, so it can't silence the spliceosome anymore and exon 7 can remain in the final mRNA. This mask is called an antisense oligonucleotide, and the drug Espinraza is based on that, which is designed for masking the ISSN1 to increase making the SMN protein by the SMN2 gene. The other drug that can correct the splicing of the SMN2 gene is Rizdiplam, which is another breakthrough in 2020 because of how it can be used by the patient since the Espinraza injected directly into the spinal cord. But Rizdiplam can be taken orally, which makes it a special drug for SMA patients, However, the mechanism of Rizdiplam doesn't quite well known. The other strategy is to add a brand new SMN1 gene to neural cells to make SMN proteins. For doing so, first we need a couple of things. We need an SMN1 transgene and a synthetic promoter, and we need a vector to deliver our gene to the lower model neurons. One of the best vectors is adeno-associated virus. After the delivery, the SMN1 transgene doesn't make DNA recombinant with the genome, and it makes enough full-length SMN proteins for the SMA patient with just a single injection that lasts for 60 minutes. 
This is the strategy of the most expensive drugs in the world, Zolgensma, and I'm gonna cover the details in another video. Having a, a lot of families that go through rough times fighting this condition. Right in fact, some of them are on YouTube, which I'm gonna put the links in the description, and you can go to their channel and support them. Or you can go to the QRSMA site to support them in any way you like. They might need some of your help. to qualify for a new breakthrough drug. Unfortunately, it's the most expensive drug in the world. It's called Zolgensma. It targets the genetic root of SMA, that missing or mutated gene. It delivers a corrected version, helping the motor neurons function properly. The one-time dose costs $2 million. I said to Rory, uh, you know, we'll do whatever it takes to get it. I, I said I would sell my organs. I immediately went to I... organ selling. Carrie went, immediately went to, this is what we're doing, we're selling our organs. And I was like, what are you talking about? The cost of it didn't really matter. Whatever it took, we were going to get our daughter this, this medication. Zolgensma is only for kids under the age of two. The thing is, the earlier you get it, the better it works. It's so good that if a baby's treated right after birth, they could live a relatively normal life.